Hi everyone, it's Rebecca at the Flower Room in Dover, New Hampshire. I am here today working on some sympathy work. I'm gonna be making an open heart today in fall colors for service it is later today. And I'm making this piece first because this is going to displace a lot of water and I wanna make sure it's not going to drip when it gets to the funeral home. So this is an aquaform heart, which has all these little plastic straps in front of the foam. So I'm not gonna tape it up today because I don't have to worry about those pieces falling out if they get loose. It does have a hard plastic backing and a hook there for me to put on my easel. So I'm putting this on my 60 inch easel and I'm gonna start with a light greening. <clears throat> Excuse the frog in my throat today. So I am starting with some of this pretty Italian ruscus. Why Italian ruscus? It looks nice and we have it today. We are in a world of you get what you get and you don't get upset. So this is what I have and this is what we are working with. It is beautiful and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It may not be my first choice for greening up a heart like this because it tends to be a little bit more pricey, but that's okay. We have it and I want to use it. So here we are. I'm going to go around the inside lightly just make sure that you can't immediately see the foam kind of on those sides and then i'll move on to the outside now it's not going to cover up absolutely everything we'll go back through when i'm done with this design and just make sure that there's nothing that is really obviously showing you want to try to get it to tuck in as close as possible so you don't ruin that heart shape you can always go back and do a little trimming afterward if you need to as well. But you wanna make sure that that heart shape is obvious when you're done with your design. It's easy to lose it. So we just wanna be cognizant of that. Also wanna make sure that you are putting your pieces in deep enough that they'll stay, but not so deep that they would like come out the other side or something like that. Almost done with that inside portion. This person was a gardener. And so we are going to make sure that this reflects her personality and that her family's really happy with it because as you know, sympathy work is absolutely the most important thing I do in my line of work. You know, we all love weddings and we love thinking about that kind of thing when it comes to floral design. And those are important too, don't get me wrong, but I feel like my work is more valuable when I help somebody who is grieving. So this means a lot to me. It, it, it's very touching when the family trusts me to make sure that their vision is achieved and that we honor their loved one with flowers properly. So I'm gonna go around the outside just like I did the inside. And I'm just making it so that not every single centimeter of this foam has to get covered with flowers because even though it doesn't look like there's a lot of foam there, it takes a lot of material to cover it so you don't see any of that foam anymore. And we wanna make sure this looks polished and finished when it's all done. No big gaps. It shouldn't look like somebody who is inexperienced did this. We all have to learn and we make mistakes, but I have a lot of experience and I don't want to look sloppy. My funeral directors trust me with their clients and that's a really important relationship too. If they suggest that somebody comes here and then they don't get good service or the flowers are not what they were thinking. It reflects badly on the funeral director and we don't want to do that to them. Helping a grieving family really is a team effort. All right, that is about halfway done on the outside. 
like I said, we'll go back and we'll check this when I'm all done with the design and just make sure that there are no gaps, no big places where you can see the foam. And there are gonna be places on here that are gonna be more important than others, just because of the way this is going to be viewed. It is likely that people are more likely to see kind of in this bottom area than in this bottom area. You know, if somebody's scooting down to see the underneath of this, I, I'm not really sure what they were doing at the time, but probably they're not going to see that quite as much. So I'm not going to be as nitpicky about making sure that it gets covered completely. We'll cover it, but we'll make sure that the places where people's eyes are going to be drawn the most get covered with the most detail. Now these foam forms, the hearts, the crosses, the wreaths, they have been very hard to get during the pandemic and the whole shipping delays thing. So I'm very lucky to still have some of these. When they are available, I just order what I can get. They are expensive. So it's a, a little bit of an investment on my part, but it is an investment worthwhile because you do not want to have to say no to somebody who really wants this heart. All right, I'm going to go through and just put a little bit on the front, not enough to cover everything up, but just to give a little texture and to give a start to actually covering up that foam. Like I said, we're not covering the whole thing. You're going to see a lot of the foam. We need lots of places to still put those flowers. If I fill it all up with greenery now, when I try to put the stems of flowers in, they'll hit the stems of greens on the inside and it'll be hard to make insertions. And if it's hard to make insertions, what will happen is I'll move those stems around and I'll put big holes in the foam. And that leads to things like flowers falling out or, you know, chewed up looking design. So we try to be really careful and place things where we want them the first time. You know, everybody's got to take something out, put it back in every now and again, but we want to try to avoid that where possible and be very deliberate with all of the insertions that we make so that we get the most out of this product and our customers get the most out of this design. All right, so we have a greened up base. You can still see the heart shape. Pull it around so you can see the shape just a little bit better. And then we're gonna enhance it with flowers. And I pulled all the flowers that I need for this before I started so that I wouldn't have to be running in and out of this video to do that. So hopefully I got them all, we'll see. All right, we're gonna start with some of our biggest flowers. So we have sunflowers first. I've got a couple of different types. We're gonna cut those pretty short because I want to make sure that basically the head of the sunflower is going to be resting on the top of that foam. I don't want it to be hanging out where it might become a pendulum and fall out because sunflowers have very thick stems. I'm going to make sure that that is cut at an angle so it doesn't twist once it's in there. And I'm going to kind of put it in so that it faces up a little bit so that gravity helps me if for some reason it does come loose. Instead of putting it in, and I'm gonna show you, I don't wanna put it in exactly straight on. Here, let's get this to the side just a little bit more. Get this over here. So I don't wanna put this in so that it's going straight in and then it gets wiggly and loose and comes out. What I want is for it to be just at a little bit of an upward angle so that the weight of that flower is coming down on its stem and it has some place to rest so that I make sure that it's not gonna fall out. Nothing more embarrassing than having something fall out. All right, so I've got that one. I've got one more sunflower. I'm gonna kind of juxtaposition this one and have it be closer to this inside. Got a little tail on there. I'm just going to make sure that stem is as smooth as possible. And again, with just a little bit of an upward angle. All right, so now that we have our sunflowers in there, I'm going to add some mums. 
mums are great for fall. They have nice big across heads so that they are going to fill in space really well. And I'm just going to add those in there. You'll notice that I like to make groupings. You get more impact with the same amount of flowers if they are grouped together than if they are kind of speckled evenly in between. So these ones are mums too, just a different variety. They have that really pretty kind of burgundy to like a golden yellow. So I'm gonna add those in there as well. Again, most things are kind of at a little bit of an upward angle just to give me a little bit more sturdy feel with this. I've got some of these pretty two-tone Gerbera daisies. We're going to add those in as well. If you start to push it in and it immediately doesn't want to go in that piece of foam, put it somewhere else. Don't fight with it. I started to put that in there and I hit just a little bit of a stem. So rather than cramming it in there and making a big, big hole, I just moved it over half an inch to where I had a little bit more space. This person liked hydrangea. I don't really want to use classic white or blue, so we have these pretty mini green. They're going to bring some lightness to this arrangement. They didn't want it to be too bright because it's a somber event. I have no problem with really bright flowers at funerals, but this is their choice. It is what they think should be, and I always honor that. So we've got our hydrangea in there. Now this person also really liked orchids. So I ordered in some of these really pretty James Story orchids. And it's not spelled story like a storybook. It's S-T-O-R-E-I-I -I, so that it's its Latin name. So you can take a look at those. Really, really pretty. I love these for fall. We're going to be using these in one of their other pieces as well. But this piece is from this woman's husband, and I thought it was really important to try to include them in here. I'm just kind of kind of let them go up the side on the inside. I've got one more stem. And I'm going to continue that line. This is not the best easel. Somebody had a fight with it. We won't talk about that. All right, so we've got the orchids in there. I also have some of these orange roses, which is really going to bring just a little bit more brightness without being overkill. really good contact with that. One of the pieces of greens kind of made that bounce out a little bit more after I put it in there. So I just moved that greenery aside and replaced it to make sure that it wasn't going to be loose. All right, so we have our orange roses. I'm gonna add a couple of red ones also. So I thought the balance of red in this arrangement was a little low, so I decided to put a couple of red roses too. I 
And then we have some of these hypericum berries. Add beautiful texture, a little bit more burgundy color. And I'm just going to kind of place those in and around. So we have some pom-poms, some little autumn daisies. I have a couple of different colors here. I'm going to use those to kind of fill in where we don't have anything now. So this is more of a deep burgundy color. The buds on that stem weren't really worth trying to use. I'm going to bring a little bit more than that hydrangea down here just so that there's a little bit of another color but I'm not going to worry too much about it because again nobody should be on the floor trying to look at this from underneath. Hopefully. And some pretty butterscotch. A little bit of a lighter color. so that I can add another stem. You don't want to have used up all of the money that you have and then realize you really needed something else. So I always leave just a couple of dollars for myself and then add whatever looks right at the end.
just about done with that. I'm going to get a couple more stems of those palms to fill in those couple of dollars that I have left. And then we're going to call this baby done. I think it's looking great. I hope the family is absolutely just taken aback with joy when they see these pieces. I know they're going through a hard time, but I hope they feel like they communicated what they needed to to me and that I heard them and I made what was going to make them the happiest at this time. All right, I'm gonna go get those, I'll be right back. All right, here we are with just a couple more stems. I'm gonna add those. on that two-tone. to put in some straw flour. What did I do with that? All right, I completely forgot about this. I've got this pretty kind of red orange straw flour and I did grow this myself. I love adding in things that I can say were mine from beginning to end. So I'm just gonna make sure I add those in there. I'm not trying to cheat anybody out of flowers. I just put them in another vase and forgot about them. touches of love in there. really done. Before this actually goes over to the funeral home, I'm going to check it and make sure that there are no spaces. We're going to add the personalization with ribbons off camera, but I'm going to move on to the next piece. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back again. I'm ready to make my second piece. So this is the backing that is used to make just regular um, easel sprays is called a never wilt spray bar holds a little bit of water in there so the holes that are in the bottom are there so that it can fill up this reservoir basically so that it doesn't drip all over the floor so these are really handy they are also pitched just a little bit in the back so the top 
is going to be thinner than the bottom so that when it sits it kind of sits at just a little bit of an angle so that when people are looking at it they're looking at it kind of at a downward rather than having it be straight on because it just is more pleasing to the eye so these are really nice I have to put one entire block of foam in there and then pin it down with these little legs here. So I'm gonna do that and we'll get started. All right, so I have added my block of foam on there and it's kind of centered in there. There are a couple of little ribs there. I'm gonna push it down onto. And then these legs go in and they have these brads and they are going to go through the hole, pinch and then release so that they lock into place they can be a little bit tough to get in there, especially because I believe that they have started to use a softer plastic, which means that they are more likely to bend under my Hulk strength rather than go through the hole. Okay, so I have got that pinned into place and I did my best not to make any big indents in it. You really have to try to push just on this and not on this, but you can see it's impossible to do it perfectly. So that's going to be right on my easel and it will display some water as I designed, but that's okay. Oop, there's my tape. So I'm going to tape this down just because I don't want there to be any chance that this comes off the easel or a chunk of this foam flies out during the ceremony of the, uh, during the funeral. You don't want that. I've heard horror stories, it's never happened to me, let's hope it never does. So I'm going to start up at the top and make sure it has good contact with the plastic. I'm going to kind of go around the back. I'm going to come down, I'm only going to go one pass on this. What's really important is that you make sure you do not accidentally tape it around this bar on the easel because if you do, you'll never get it off again, or you'll have to cut it off, and that's really inconvenient. So you wanna lift it up just a little bit, bring it back around, and just make sure it meets with that tape again at the top, so it's sticking to itself. It's just duct tape, it's painted green, charge it 10 times as much because it's for florists. Again, fighting with that easel. I think I'm gonna have to throw this one away. The gentleman that works for me was having some trouble figuring out how to fold it up so when it didn't fold the way he expected it to, instead of not pushing it, he just went and jammed it as hard as he could and ripped it in half. Anyway, that's what I'm working with. All right, now that we have our easel all taped up, I'm going to start with greening. I'm working with some huckleberry today. It's very branchy. I like it a lot for this kind of work, however. You'll get some pieces that are a little bit more straight, some pieces that are gonna have a little bit more of a curve to them. Rule with doing flowers is to not fight with the product. It's gonna go the direction it wants to. If you try to fight with it, you're, you're not gonna win. You're just not gonna win. So we're gonna just use this to establish our overall size and shape. We wanna kind of figure out where that top point is gonna be, where the bottom point's gonna be, and how far on the sides this is gonna come out in the end. There are designers who green last. I am too much of a klutz to do that. If I do that, I end up smashing my fingers through fragile flowers and breaking things, so it's not my style, but there's nothing wrong with it if that's how you do it. I just prefer to green first. They say that if you green last, you use less greens, and I believe that, but if I have to replace every flower that's in there, that's more expensive than the green, so it's the way I do it. No shade on those who don't. We all have our own ways. One of my very first colleagues always told me that just because you don't do something the same way as everybody else doesn't mean you're doing it wrong as long as you end up with the same result. I was very lucky to have mentors when I first came into the industry when I was in my late teens that took me under their wing and 
made me feel like I could actually do this. I'm not sure I would have believed it at the time because I wasn't terribly good at it, but I've gotten better over the years. So here we are now, 21 or 22 years later. All right, I'm gonna get just a little bit more in there. I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I'm just getting it started, just like on the wreath. I don't want to take up too much space in the foam. I have a bigger piece of foam here that I did with the wreath. You know, it's not just two inches wide, so there's a little bit more leeway, but you still don't want to be using up all that valuable foam space for greenery. Just a few more pieces. I want to make sure I get a little bit down in here so that when somebody looks at this, it doesn't have the appearance that you can see through it. I want those greens to give it a little bit more of a background there. Adds to the overall visual value of the piece. There's a lot of talk about perceived value in flowers because you can take the same amount of flowers and foliage and materials and make something that is really big or really small and you need to know your customer and what they value whether it is size or it is a style do they want that round mound of flowers to go on their coffee table nothing wrong with that or do they want something that's going to be bigger and more open in a design my hands are disgusting I'm gonna wipe those off and then we'll get started with the flowers. So this one is gonna be more of a pinks and purples kind of a piece. There are no hard and fast rules for colors with flowers for funerals. It really is up to the person who's purchasing and what the person who passed likes. So the person who ordered this piece really would prefer something that had more of a traditional feminine feel. So we're gonna be using lavenders and purples and pinks in this. I'm gonna start with some of my line flowers and by line flower, anything that causes directionality in your arrangement is a line flower. Some people call it a spike, but you'll see kind of the difference. The Salstromeria kind of just fills in at the top. It's broad, it is not going to be a line flower. This snapdragon is going to cause direction it's going to cause your eye to move and that is going to be line flower so we're going to use that first and we're going to establish kind of the outer barriers of our flowers with these you can't see that bottom one but I'll back this up when I'm done so you can see. So I've got the snapdragons in now I'm working with some of this liatris. so you can see the overall shape starting to form. You can see that we have flowers basically making our kind of elongated oval that will be this piece. All right, so we have roses going in here, we have lilies going in here, and then we have some other kind of fill in flowers as well. I'm going to start with my lilies. They are fragile and if they weren't such an important placement, I might wait until a little later to put them in, but they're pretty important and I want to make sure that we get good contact with our foam. So I'm going to use these first and these are going to be, they're a pretty double lily and I really do like that. They were what was available, so lucky us.
I cut one of the buds off of that first stem to use separately. There's no point if it was facing back and having that lily face back there. I want to make sure that all the flowers that the person paid for are showing as best as they can. So again, with that one, I cut another bud off. And one more stem of those lilies. And then we can move on to roses. Okay, you can see I have some facing up and some facing down and some kind of facing out. All right, let's move on to roses. So I have these pretty Sophie roses and I do love Sophie. It's a rose that opens up completely. And I just need to tell you really fast that just because a rose is open does not mean that it is old. They are not synonymous. They are also not mutually exclusive. Make sure you're going with a flower shop that uses high quality products and you should not be disappointed. I love these roses for this kind of design because they are so open, because they are taking up so much space and looking lovely and Hit that tape. There we go. It does something out this way too. Mm -hmm. It's a very traditional piece. Not a lot of grouping in this particular design. I think they'll be really happy with it. All right, there are roses added in. Now that Alstromeria I was talking about before, we're gonna get that in, fill in these edges just a little bit maybe sink a couple down in between. Just a little short. You really want this arrangement to look full when you're all done. One of the things that can happen to beginning designers is that they make those outside parameters bigger than they really should, and then they end up not having enough flowers to kind of fill that area in. It happens to the best of us. But then you end up having to shorten everything or uh, add more flowers to fill in the gaps. You really do want this to look full with the recipe that you have made for. And I always make my recipe before I start designing. Because I can't help any more people when they are grieving if I'm out of business because I did not pay attention to what things cost me to make. I have just a little bit of these dark purple daisies here. I'm gonna add those in. I just wanted a, just a touch of a darker color. We don't use an awful lot of dark purple in funerals just because the lighting is very warm in a funeral home. And what'll happen is these might look more almost magenta once they are in that lighting. And also dark colors are recessive. So you'll notice when you look at this picture here, you don't see those dark colors quite as much. The lighter colors are gonna come through first. So we don't want to overload this with super dark colors because they might end up just looking like black empty spaces in the design. So just, just a touch, just a little bit to bring some depth to the arrangement 
without making it look dark. I do often let people know if I'm talking to them and they really want to use a lot of purple or a lot of lavender in their designs and it's a the color is more than just an I like the way this looks it's very important to them that color matches that the lighting in the funeral home will affect the way they see that color and that I just want to allow them to know that information before they get there because I don't want them to be disappointed or think that I didn't listen. Because when you're grieving and when you're at a funeral, you're not looking at the color of the light bulbs to see if maybe that changed the tone of your purple. I don't expect you to be. That's why it's my job to let you know ahead of time. Just give you fair warning that it may not look exactly like it did when I designed it when it gets to the funeral home. Take it outside look great. This has a lot of pinks in it, so the pinks might get a little warmer, but I am not too terribly worried about this particular design because of the varied nature of all of the tones in it. I think that it's going to look just fine. So I also have some of these lavender button chrysanthemums that I'm going to put in and let those fill in just a little bit more as well. hazards of working in a flower shop. It's a lot of stuff on the floor. You have to be very quick on your feet. Have a good sense of balance. I'm just holding the other side because I don't want this to swing when I'm trying to put those flowers in. Since it isn't actually fixed to the easel in any way, there are certain times where that might slide over while you're trying to put the flowers in and that's just inconvenient. So if I'm holding it really, it's just to make sure that it doesn't move out of my way. Make sure that if you've got any broken ones on there, take those off. One broken flower can ruin an entire design. So you really try hard to make sure that everything that goes out looks pretty perfect. It's not that anybody is looking for problems in the design, but your eye is naturally gonna go to something that is not quite right. One of these things is not like the other, it just starts happening. And because people are already upset, those things mean more than they would on a regular day. We just try not to upset them. I've got one more of those. breaking these pieces up for you just so that you know I'm using my knife and I'm just going in between nodes on the flower stem and breaking it into pieces so that I can use it in more than one place. These are huge stems and I'm trying to make sure the customer gets all the value out of them that is offered. This design is going to be uh, some lavender lisianthus and actually some limonium as well. I'm going to go get some of that lisianthus and I will be right back. All right, so a pretty lisianthus that I grew myself. Again, adding a little bit of touch of something that I grew myself really means a lot to me. So we're going to add a little bit of this. Almost forgot. I 
grabbed a little bit more than I needed. We'll see. is kind of a hurry up and wait sort of industry. So these funeral pieces need to be delivered by 2 p.m. today. It is about 12.30 now. I have one more piece to make after this one, which I will also show you. But you don't want to start these things too early because you don't want that foam to start to dry out and to have your flowers start to wilt. So you really do have to make them pretty close to the time. I could have made them yesterday if I wanted to, and I did actually start a couple of the more simple pieces yesterday. So I did those without filming, sorry. I'll do better next time. But it's just a basket and a little vase arrangement, so nothing too terribly exciting. They're still pretty. All right, so there's our Lysianthus, and then I'm gonna add some of this Blue Stream Limonium, and it's just gonna add some softness to the edges and fill in a little bit in between. when I am handling a family funeral, I check the time of the funeral about six or seven times just to make sure I didn't mishear someone or misunderstand or they gave me a time for one service but there was one before it. But yeah, I, it's so important that things are there on time. You want to make sure the funeral directors aren't sweating. You don't want to be running in and trying to set things up while the family is arriving and they are always going to arrive an hour before the general public arrives for the service. So this service starts at four, which means that the family can go in at three, which means that I want to be getting myself out of that flower delivery game by two. I know it's not gonna take an hour for the funeral directors to set up these pieces, but I want to give them all the time that they need. No rushing. And this is why they trust me. It's so important to have those relationships and make sure to nurture them and treat other people in Kind of parallel industries um, with a lot of respect. You know, we work with a lot of other companies. We obviously we do weddings and things like that too. So we're working with bakers and photographers and we're working with coordinators and all that sort of thing. You need to make sure that when people work with you, they have a good experience. It's not just the customers. It's also those people in the parallel industries. So I'm just about done with this. Just a couple little more touches and that's gonna be done. And again, any personalization that might happen with this will happen off camera. I don't need to be sharing with the general public who this is actually for or what the ribbons will say if they get them. I just want you to know how much I care about my clients and make sure that they get the best products possible from me and share a little about what I do. So I hope you really like this one. We have one more piece to make. I'm going to finish up with just the greenery on this one off camera. I will pull this back just a little bit so you can see and you can kind of get an idea of its size next to me. I'm five feet tall. So it's a beautiful big piece. This will get some personalization. Add just a little bit more greenery to finish off the back and then this one is done. I'll see you with the next one. All right, hello everyone. I am back with the last piece for this particular service. 
So this is going to be a vegetative design. It's going to sit behind the urn. So the long boxes that were available were not anymore for now. So I have taken two boxes and I have used little beehive tacks to tack a little piece of glue on to the bottom of that and would glue it together so that I make sure that this is sturdy and it's not going to go anywhere. There's about a full block of foam in each one of these and I have filled them with water because I want to make sure that they're not going to leak. Nobody wants soggy bottom arrangements at their funeral so you want to make sure that the water goes in there first. Okay, that way if it does leak I can change a different liner out and save the day. Because that's what I'm in the business of doing. I'm in a very, very kind of softly and easily just put a few pieces of greenery in just to get me started. I'm not gonna be greening this up to get shape like I would with the other pieces that I did. just going to cover up the edge just a little bit here and there. Start to form a little bit of what I would like my design to look like, but in no way is this going to hinder me from putting things out beyond the greens like it would with the standing sprays. I'm going to make this facing me, but I will turn it around a bunch of times so you can see what kind of progress I'm making. And I'm putting more greens in the back than in the front right now because this will be a one-sided arrangement. No one is going to be walking around the back of this because it will be up against the wall. So there's no point in putting flowers back here and having the customer pay for something that no one is going to look at or notice. So the back will be mostly foliage and then the front will be a beautiful, wonderful arrangement. Alright, so like I said, this is going to be a vegetative design, which basically means as it grows. We're going to have this look like it's a garden, like it is growing where I put it. So you can see from there, the back is basically greened. There's almost nothing in the front, almost nothing on top. I'll fill it in later if I need to. So I'm starting with this pretty smoke bush cottonous, cotonous, however you want to say it. And I'm going to get some beautiful height with this. Just looks like fall leaves. It's going to give it a really natural garden feel. All right, so I've got those. And I also have some of this Safari Sunset Protea, and I'm gonna use that kind of on the other side, not at the same height, but to give height to the other side as well. There are a couple of leaves that have kind of dark edges. I'm gonna take most of those off. They're not really harming anything, but I just don't want it to look imperfect. So we started that, just that basic grouping of flowers. <laughs> That's going to be a fun sound through the video. And again, this is the same person. We're using those James Story orchids again. I'm going to use those kind of nearish that protea. They're just going to kind of continue the line the protea has already made, but bring the color down a little closer to the foam. And I have some of this pretty orange celosia that I'm using, and I am going to use that kind of down low. This family really didn't want this to be too bright, so I'm getting this color in there, but I'm not having it be way up high. I'm going to kind of tuck it in so that it is little touches of that brighter color here and there and not so in your face. that'll start to kind of fill in on the foam. And I'm putting things near the back, mostly because when somebody looks at this from the front, I want them to be 
able to look almost all the way through the design as if they're kind of looking through a little looking glass or something. I want them to be able to kind of look and see interest going all the way from the back to the front. Otherwise, it's going to look really flat and it's not going to have a lot of interest. So we don't want that. We want to have lots of texture and lots of interest and for people to want to keep coming back and looking at it again and again and see different things in it. I'll turn this around again after I finish this step. You can kind of see they're just kind of tucked down in between. We've got a couple of Gerbera daisies. We've been using those throughout this funeral in all the pieces except for the pink and lavender one because obviously they just would not look good in there. But it gives a little bit of continuity between the designs to make sure that even though not every single flower is repeated, you have some elements that are repeated through all so that they look like they belong together. Again, this person loved hydrangea, so we're going to get some of those in there kind of low as well. They're really good for covering up the foam. I'm also going to cross a couple over so that you start to lose the line between the two boxes where they are connected, and it just looks like one continuous arrangement. I'm going to put my sunflowers in this step as well. Flowers are not as open as I would love, but they are the ones with the darkest petals and I wanted to use them. So I am having them face a little bit more upward than upward. They will start to open a little bit more as the service goes on. That's the fun thing about flowers is they just kind of keep evolving over time. All right, so now I have a few roses. I'm going to put those in. Scotch daisies. flower but they would be considered a lower value flower so having those come around the back just a little bit so that it gives the appearance that the arrangement is all the way around can be helpful again adding value to that arrangement the customer doesn't want to pay for flowers in the back I am not cheating them out of flowers in the back it just looks more expensive if it looks like there are some flowers in the back so we are going to give the illusion that this arrangement goes all the way around. So we have added in those daisies. You can see that is filling in very nicely. And just to continue with the purple that we added in the other arrangements, I'm going to put a little bit of purple status in this as well.
last of that status and I'm going to just check my recipe to make sure that there is nothing that should have been in there that did not end up in there. Perfect. I didn't forget anything this time. So that's our finished look. The urn will be right here in front. So you'll have kind of these two sides cradling that a little bit. I'm going to finish this off with just a little bit of greens in the back just to make sure that there is nothing that is uncovered. So even though this is going to be facing the wall, I still want it to look finished. I don't want it to look like I forgot to do it. So we're going to cover up any bits of the foam that are showing there to give it a clean, polished, finished look because we are professionals and we don't send things out unfinished. All right, so there we are. Thank you so much for staying with me today. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I'm going to finish up the personalization on these and head out to the funeral home with them so that I can make sure that the family has everything that they need for this service. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. If there's something in particular you want to learn about, Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have comments about the design, about what I'm using, or ways that you do things. I'd love to hear it. Have a fantastic week, and remember, I am here for you if you need me, all your floral needs. Thanks. Bye, guys.